Professor, would you please explain to us who exactly Eshua Legba really is in our lives? Yes, of course. Well, first of all, I hope that Eshu allow me to, to talk about him now. But uh, this is a very controversial uh, subject of conversation. Very controversial because in the tradition, as in the diaspora, we have issue uh, in two different roles. We recognize him as issue Alemba. And there are groups of persons with different points of view about issue, about Alemba. Some groups talk about issue and Alemba as being the devil, as being Satan. And some other ones talk about issue as being the forcer of uh, universal loss. So it means that issue has to be one of them. Who really issue is? The devil or the enforcer of uh, universal laws in favor of the rules of law to marry? Let's analyze. I don't think that it is a very smart uh, decision to put ourselves in one of the sides. I don't think that is a very a very smart decision to support one of these two point of view that are in contradiction. Because uh, well, the fact is that the I think the the most intelligent position is to give information, and each of a person according to the information given could be making decision and they can they can make their own point of view. That is what I'm gonna do in this moment. When we are talking about uh issue for example in the tradition is associated with three different cities in Nigeria. One of them is Ofa, the other one is Ketu, and the other one is Ebba. And he is identified as the king of Ketu, and it is associated as the king of Ebba and Ofa also. So, Ofa as a place where he was born, and Ketu and uh, Ebba two different places where he was a king. Maybe Ebba is associated with the name of El Ebba, or El Ebara, as it is recognized also. El Ebara dealing with the king that was able to do good things in favor of the people of Ebba. And we have that the word in Yoruba dealing with good things we uh, use it or we use uh, the word um, data data really, really. so maybe from this uh, association the name of a lebara could be derived in this case we are talking about a place where Perhaps uh, Eshu was given different, uh, or was making different deeds in favor of the people. And that's why we associate Eshu as being, as been, uh, let's say, a good divinity. 
So a kind of rumoli that is working in favor of. But in some other part of uh, Ifa's stories, Asia is doing some other opposite, different uh, role, opposite role. In this case, he was playing the role of a person that is putting obstacle in the life of the, of the people. When we make an analysis of different ifas audio, so we're talking about different ifas as uh, signs, we have Hiroshonsa. And Hiroshonsa talks about uh, the time when Eshu um, rebelled against Orumila, uh, against Olodumare's uh, rules or principles. And he made a, re a revolution or a rebellion against the different the different rules or principles that Olodumare had dictated in order to give organization, in order to give harmony to the creation. So he was causing havoc. In another another Odu Ifa, Obedi, is one of the Ifa's Odu that is talking about Eshu in rebellion against Olodumare's principle also. And in this specific Odu, Olodumare is telling, is, is revealing that he was not the creator of Eshu and he didn't create the what it is evil and the evil is the in the hand of Eshu at such a grade that Eshu was able to influence on the mind of some Irumale in that moment and those Irumole followed Eshu against Olodumare. Olodumare never created something that could be against him, that could be making some kind of gaps or breakings in the existence that he created. All those things that was created by Olodumare, the powerful God, was in order to give harmony, balance in the universe, in favor of the human being. So that's why he may he clarifies that he never created the evil, and the evil is what is in hands of each. So how come we could have Eshu as an enforcer of Olodumare's law when he is against the other law? When he is able to break the law? In other parts of Ifa studies, Ifa Ordus, we have that Eshu is uh, the divinity that is placing obstacles in the life of the different people, according to the studies. For example, we have Baba Eyombi. Baba Eyombi talks about the time when Orula was not feeding Eshu as he wanted. And Eshu was able to interrupt the life of Orula, in the moment when the different ideas were coming down from heaven to earth to visit Orula, because Orula had had done some sacrifices in order to have those ideas. But Eshu, because Orula hadn't fed him, 
in the way that he wanted, and she was able to to tell the Ire that Rolula had died. And because of that, the Ire left. I didn't visit Orula. But when Orula realized that something was wrong and maybe Yeshu was putting some obstacles in order to receive those Ire, Orula called Yeshu and fed him as he wanted. Immediately, Yeshu was able to reverse that action. And he went to the Ire personified in some other uh, person and in this case said <clears throat> what you were told that Orula had died was a lie. Orula is a lie. And he guided the Ire to Orula's place. So what did Orula do with the issue? An agreement. A deal. He didn't pay homage. He made a deal in order to avoid any kind of obstacle that Eshu could be putting in his life. Eshu represented as the ruler of Elanini. And Elanini in Yoruba means obstacle. So he is the commander in chief of obstacles, Elanini. But the different Ajoguns, when we are talking about Ajoguns, we are talking about death, we are talking about sickness, we are talking about tragedies, conflicts, loss. And he is the commander of all things. When we are talking about Ajogun, we are talking about bad things, evil. And Olodumari, Olodumari was able to clarify that he didn't create evil. So, who created evil? But what we know that he created, Elemba. Among the Irumore. And Elemba is what? Is the one that is the opener of the different roads of the life. For the people. So we are talking about Elemba doing good actions, good deeds. And when we are talking about Elemba and Aneshu, what are we talking about? Different roles made by one person or a divinity. So we're talking about the different roles of Elemba and Enshu. Is it possible that Olodumari created Elemba in order to be the enforcer, in order to be the protector, in order, in order to be the opener of the different possibilities in the roles of the life. And because of uh, ambition, because of a greed, in that moment, he could turn himself or by himself into Eju because what well, Eju or the name of Eju means the opposer. And let's make a kind of relationship between this and the name of devil. The devil, the name of the devil in, in uh, the meaning of devil is the opposer. And the meaning of Satan 
is the liar. Didn't Eshu, didn't Eshu say a lie in order to go against Rumila, to interrupt the, the, the flow of Ire in the life of Rumila? According to Baba Yobbe, that's why certain group of person is thinking, or they are thinking of Eshu as the devil, as Satan. And Eleba as that person or that divinity created by Olodumari in order to do good, in order to bring protection. So that's why when we have Eleba open or when we have those uh, action in our life of opening as opening the different roles of the life, we have the action or the role played by Eleba. But when we have any kind of opposition, when we have a blockage, when we have all those roles blocked, we are talking about Asia. That's why in certain part of Nigeria, there is a kind of uh, issue on the name of one of the issue or one of the road of issue that is called Evita. And diaspora is it is recognized as Abita. Echo Vita is a kind of issue that is made by the hand of man to do evil, to ask for evil against a person. So, how come we have an Irumole doing that piano, playing that can that role of making evil if he was created by Olodumari in order to do, in order to bring good things for the people, in order to bring harmony, in order to bring balance. We have to think about it deeply. Another thing that we could talk about Asia is that Asia represented as divinity or as an energy that is living in the back of the neck. That's why it is recognized as Echo Nipako. Nipako means the back of the neck. So it means that we could have a kind of energy that could be interrupting, could be blocking the flow of energy that goes along the spine, goes up along the spine to the brain. Let's analyze the possibility. At the level, the level of a third vertebra of spine, we have a ganglion, a ganglion that is called the superior cervical ganglion. It is one of the three ganglion that gathers the different signals that goes through the spine to the brain. And we have this part of uh, where there is a joint between the spine and the brain that is called, well, it is, it is called stem. In that part of the stem, we have different organs that deals with the uh, movement and some other kind of regulations of the balance of the energy of the persons. 
This gambling, I'm talking about the third or the higher or the superior cervical ganglion, is made of different or four kind of nerves that they join in this ganglion. Four of them. Echu, it is said that he lives in the crossway of the different ways. In this case, we are talking about the crossway, what we have here with the spine, and we have the clavicle. That is a kind of bone that we have here. And at that kind, at that kind of crossway is the crossway that we have of the spine, engorging, and the, the brain. So in the stem, we are talking about some kind of energy that could be opposed to the good functioning, to the good performance of the different activities of the mind or the brain. And that kind of role is a one that play this ganglion, the superior cervical ganglion. Because it's the one, the, the, the only ganglion of the, of the three ganglions that we have in the spine that is able to, or is the only one that innervates the brain and that controls the different manifestations of the mind. I mean, the different mental processes. This ganglion is uh, a part of a sympathetic uh, nervous system. So we are talking about the autonomic nervous system. It is this autonomic nervous system is the one that is, uh, that uh, regulates the internal or the, the function of internal organ, organs of our body. So the main or one of the two main actions of this cervical ganglion is to control, to, to work in for the homeostasis is the one that uh, um, is the responsible to maintain the homeostasis of the body. When we are talking about the homeostasis, we are talking about balance of the body. What a coincidence. But we are talking about H-U-L-E-B-A. We are talking about balance. When a left back is opening the rows of a life, we are in balance. When HU is closing the rows of a life, we are talking about imbalances. So we are talking about HU putting some obstacles. HU bringing some kind of signals that can block the action of this controller that we call the cervical ganglion. And when we are talking about the third cervical or superior cervical ganglion, it is at the third level or the level of the third vertebra of the spine, we are talking about three. And three is the number of elepa. We are talking about something that is just a good coincidence. We are talking about the influence of elepa and issue. Elepa opening, elepa keeping the balance of the body, the homeostasis. Uh, this is called in the medical part, 
And we're talking about what? We're talking about issue blocking the action of that uh, cervical uh, ganglion. And if it is blocking the action of that cervical ganglion, we have to remember that this ganglion is the one that is regulating certain or most of the mental processes and the brain activity and performances because it is the only one that enervates the brain. There is a uh, let's say uh, a part of this ganglion or, or, or this innervation that it is the reticular part or the reticular system that deals with the energy, that deals with the current electromagnetic um, potential that we have in the brain in order to the, for the brain to do the proper and different activities in the proper uh, way. So, we're talking about issue, bringing that kind of interruption or blockage. But something more. When we're talking about issue, we're talking about two colors. When we are representing issue, when we are representing elemba, issue elemba, we're talking about the red part and the black and the black part. For example, in a in a or in chobe or one chobe as it is called in 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 the uh, diaspora. We are going to find a story when Eshu was able to break up the relationship or the friendship between two friends. Based on a very simple action, he wore a kind of custom with one part in black and the other one in red. And when he went through these two persons, two friends, that were talking about something, he didn't ask for permission. And when they were make a com made a comment about the person that had uh, that had went uh, through them without permission, they started making those comments based on the, the, the way that uh, the person was worried. And one identified issue wearing in black and the other one wearing in red. And because of that, they started arguing. arguing. They started making arguments at such a degree that they broke the relationship or broke the friendship. So we are talking about Asia in that moment making a kind of breakage, making making horrible havoc, making damage, hurting the balance between two friends, breaking the harmony between these two friends, using the color black and using the color red. When we're talking about the color black, it is important to know that we are talking about the absorption of light, black, no light is a kind of light that has been absorbed but is not emitted. When you absorb light, we're talking about energy. And that kind of energy is 
heat. And that kind of heat is a one that is going to make that kind of blockage in any kind of activity, mainly in the activity of the spine, the flow of the energy of the spine that goes up to the brain. And when we are talking about the red part, we are talking about the flow of the current of the, of the blood. So we are talking about the flow of life because the blood is the one that is bringing the nutrition and oxygen to the different parts of the body, but mostly to the brain. And when you, when you reduce the oxygen, for example, in the brain, you are causing what, what it is called hypoxia. You are causing the different roles or performances, processes of the brain being interrupted. They being interrupted because of what? Because the oxygen is the main fuel used by the cells of the brain in order to produce energy, represented by ATP. So when you don't have energy in your brain, the brain cannot work properly. If the, the brain cannot work properly, we are in front of what? A blockage. We cannot think properly. We cannot regulate our conduct or behavior properly. We cannot, we cannot give solution to our problems. We cannot use our intelligence. We start impairing our memory. That is the action of what? That is the action of the blockage. The black part. That is it. But another important role that this ganglion, I'm talking about the cervical the superior cervical ganglion, thus is to regulate energy in our body. So, this is a coincidence, but we have to talk about this. The color of the superior cervical ganglion is reddish gray. Reddish gray. Reddish comes from where? What color? Red. And gray from what color? Black. So we are talking about the action of Echu and Elemba. Elemba opening the, the good action of opening the possibility of having homeostasis balance through the nutrition that is taken through the through the, the blood and the oxygen that is taken through the blood to the brain and the different cells not only of the brain but your body the different organs the different systems of the body and as you putting obstacles, interrupting the balance, making imbalances, reducing the, the energy. So interrupting 
the good functioning, the good performance of the different activities of the brain. That's not a coincidence. Another thing that this cervical ganglion, where the activity of the issue is manifested, is the regulation of the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm deals with the hours of the day and the night. The activities of performance of the different organs in the day of our body, in the day and in the night. And it is done through something that we call suprachiasmatic nucleus, that is in one glands that it is called hypothalamus. This nucleus controls the kind of the amount of light according to the hour of the day. The ganglion, the cervical ganglion, the third cervical ganglion or the superior cervical ganglion, one of the things is to control the action of the iris. To expand the iris or to contract the iris. In order to permit, to allow the light coming into to the brain or to stop or to block that light. When that light is blocked, there is a gland that is a pineal gland that starts making what? Releasing a hormone that it is called the melatonin. The melatonin is a hormone that is a one that, that uh, um, causes uh, a sleepiness. When the time of the day starts uh, darkening, in that moment, we start releasing through that gland, the pineal gland, that hormone. Or the, and then this hormone is a melatonin. That it works doing something. First of all, he tried to control the kind of, uh, uh, let's say, rhythm of the brain. And at the same time, repairs. Repairs the different tissues that have been damaged. And at the same time, it is working as an antioxidant. Antioxidant. We are talking about a kind of, uh, a kind of uh, action that, uh, is able, is able to, um, catch any kind of free radicals. And those free radicals are the one that is, are the ones that make impairments, damage in the different tissues. This action, this action is when we are in the darkness. This action is when the day starts dim. Demon. In this case, we are talking about something that aids you in, a, let's say, metaphorically speaking, is able to obscure, to dark. Okay, is able to darken our life through that kind of low frequencies of energy, blocking the performance of the brain. That's why in some part of, uh, of the old Viva, like Baba Yobe, we have that kind of story 
that we call the Allah Bank forget it. And that story is talking about the fact that sometimes we have in front of us, near, very close to us, things that we cannot see. Remember that we can see what we know. We cannot see what we don't know. So one of the action of issue is to block our knowledge that it is represented by the light because the light is the one that is bringing the information and those places where the light go through the light lifts information and at the same time catches information gets information And if metaphorically we are not able to see the light of our or the information of Ifa, the information of a good things, when we are not able to, to, to know what to do because we cannot think, because we are blood, the prefrontal part of the of the of the of the brain where the intelligence is supposed to be and the problem solving is supposed to be when we are not able to know what to do or what way to take in order to solve problems that is the action of which one when, when when we are not studying when we are not able to concentrate, to focus, having the light of wisdom of Ifa, that is the action of vision. And that's why we don't learn. And if we don't learn, we don't know. If we don't know, we cannot see. So, one of the action of age is to stop learning. One of the action of age is to keep us in ignorance. So, when we are talking about Asian, we are talking about the action of breaking our balance in our life. When we are talking about things flowing, we are talking about the left bar. That is the action of the light. That is the action of the flow of energy in the blood. That is the action of the flow of nutrition in the blood the flow of oxygen in the blood going through all over our body. They are the different roads. The different roads of our life. That is the performance, the action of Asia and in our life.